Welcome back to Mackey Arena. Season opener in front of what will be a sold out crowd. 25 sellouts in a row for the Board of Makers. There's just a whole different vibe and energy in the building tonight. You can tell everyone realizes this game counts for the record books. This is a highly anticipated season for the Purdue Boilermakers. Lofty expectations, and everybody in the building is ready to get it going. And hello and welcome. Nice to have all of you with us tonight on a Monday night as we talk Boilermaker basketball. As always, we are live from Wolfie's Grill this evening on the Wabash Landing right here in West Lafayette. And for the next 55 minutes or so, we are going to talk Boilermaker hoops. Lots to talk about uh, over the, those uh, next 55 minutes, including two games from last week, a Tuesday night victory for the Boilermakers, 96-67 to over Bellerin. And then Purdue also winning on Friday night over Indiana State by a nearly identical score, 92 to 67. Purdue beat Indiana State on Friday night. So we're going to visit with Coach Painter about that. Uh, also coming up before this program is over, uh, we will look ahead to tomorrow night's opponent, Wright State, coming in with a one and one overall record. The Raiders will be at Mackey Arena for a seven o'clock tip tomorrow night. And then a big weekend coming up for the Boilermakers in Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun Arena because it is the Hall of Fame tip-off classic with Purdue playing Saturday at four against the 18th ranked team in the country, the North Carolina Tar Heels. And then Purdue will play Sunday against either Villanova or Tennessee, which will mean Purdue will be playing either the number five team in the country or the number 17 team in the country. So a huge weekend coming up for Boilermaker basketball, certainly uh, this coming weekend. So lots to talk about here. I am Rob Blackman. Thanks so much for joining us. Here's how you can visit with a coach if you'd like to call in tonight. The phone number is one 888-246-2678, 1-888-246-2678. Live tonight at Wolfie's Grill, and uh, one quick bit of housekeeping, by the way, fans. I'll try to remind you of this a couple more times before the show is over. No coaches show next Monday night. We'll take next Monday off and then return uh, the following Monday. So no basketball coaches show next Monday here at Wolfie's Grill. Uh, when uh, we come back, Coach Matt Painter will join me as we talk Boilermaker basketball. This is Boilermaker basketball from Learfield. Inside look, good give and go, but Edie right there to swat it away. Great help defense, Calix Stevens. Oh, the move inside, Dave Nivey. Chance to go to the line and tie the game. Victory on the road for Indiana State. Three-point lead for the Sycamores. Stefanovic fires away from three, ties again. Best shooter to come. From the outside, too strong. They had to hoist it up there to get it over Edie's hands. Ivy go. on the drive, yes, with the left hand. Bledson from three now. Indiana State's playing harder right now. Blocked by there Williams. Ivy to the rack, lays it up and in. You still have Brandon Newman and Eric Hunter, and you still have been two starters. Eric Hunter is the best defender in the conference. Brandon Newman is one of the best scorers. Good pick up. Edie inside. Good, Good look to first. Great pass. Pass. Edie. Too Good easy fella. for the Boilers. Point of emphasis getting into the paint here tonight. Good backdoor cut. Swatted away by Williams. Took just two shots. Ivy, straightaway three. He comes out, guns a blaze here in the second half. But at the end of the day, your guards got to make plays come March. And Purdue right now, I mean, that guard right there, one of the best guards in the country. I'd be excited if I was Coach Painter having him on Shot clock winding down, down to five. Ivy, pick the pocket. Showtime. Break away. Dribble, no look pass. Travion Williams inside. Jade Ivy, too much. Jade Ivy tonight. Coach Wooden, ten national titles in twelve years for UCLA. Isaiah Thompson dials up a three. Tough team to contend with in the Missouri Valley Conference. Nice pass by Williams. Back to the Matt Painter Radio Show, presented by Jimco. We are live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. Wolfie's Grill right here on the Wabash Landing in West Lafayette. Thank you so much for joining us. Jimco Constructors is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor for the Matt Painter Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Jimco Constructors says boiler up. Coach Painter is alongside. Again, we have a lot to talk about here and uh, before this next hour is up. 
two Purdue games have gone final since we've last spoken. They were the first two games of the regular season. Purdue beating Bellerman 96-67 Tuesday and then Friday 92-67 over Indiana State. Coach Painter, uh, let's start with that. Your team scored in the 90s both games. Shot it well, 44% from three in the first game, 40% from three in the uh, Friday night game against Indiana State. Uh, those are the good things. Obviously, you look at a game film a little bit more critical than I do. What were some things you liked and maybe disliked? Yeah, I, I think uh, each game we've had, we've gotten better defensively, but that's still the, the part where we've struggled the most. I think there's probably a lot of <clears throat> college coaches across the country that would agree that their offense is probably a little bit ahead of their defense at this point of the year. And, um, you know, we just have to do it better with our kind of doing our job and having discipline. In, in, in what we do, we just have way too many breakdowns. We, we start plays and we're not in the right spot. Uh, simple things happen and it moves us. We have poor closeouts. Our details and ball screen defense is just okay. We have to do a better job containing the dribble, but we also got to do a better job of awareness when guys have mismatches and stuff and we need to be in gaps and stop the basketball. So I could go on and on about the, the details of the game. We, we just have to um, – I told our guys just – it's the accountability of, of, of what goes on, but just being more demanding of yourself. I think that's what each one of our guys, you know, has to do. You just got to be able to cross your T's, dot your I's, be more demanding of yourself, and uh, do a lot of little things. Because once you kind of lose, you know, the details of things, you're not connected as a defense, then everything breaks down. You're just going to be in rotations. You're just going to be behind plays. And when you're behind plays, you normally foul. and you're behind plays, you normally don't get rebounds then it's just a, it's a vicious cycle. So we just got to keep, you know, being better at what we do. It, uh, defensively, getting ready for Bellerman, the season opener, you had talked about, even after the exhibition games, how you needed to be better containing the dribble, keeping the dribbler in front of you. The great irony is that first game of the year against Bellerman, they're not a team that dribbles a lot, right? So uh, defensively, talk about maybe yeah, trying to adjust to that. And, and that's a good thing, too, because now you got to play somebody a lot different than anybody else you're going to play, and you got to be able to make that adjustment. So they pass the ball more than anybody in the country. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how they're, they keep stats on <laughs> how many times you pass the ball. But they they pass the ball more than any NBA team does, and we play 40-minute games, and they play 48-minute games. Wow. So it just kind of shows you, you know, what it really means. And so we, we put a lot of detail into switching their uh, – their back cut, switching their things, and trying to knock out the post to the best of the ability so they wouldn't have that element, and then being able to contain the dribble and do what we have to do late in the clock because they're not going to dribble normally early in the clock. But get the ball up the court, then after that they're going to pass it. And I, I call it playing hot potato. They just keep moving the basketball as quick as they can and, and, and just try to break you down. So I thought that piece was good, but we, we just have to keep working. And then the next game I thought playing Indiana State, that was they just came off a road win um, at Green Bay and then being able to play them. And they play closer to how a Big Ten team plays, obviously, than somebody like Bellerman. Back to Bellerman, did it surprise you that they shot 35 threes in that game? They shot 24 twos, 35 threes. And I did peek at the scouting report, truth be told, it didn't seem like in the scouting report they were a team that shoots a lot of threes coming in, but for whatever reason against Purdue, right. they were letting them fly. Yeah, they make a lot of layups, and they only made 12 layups in the game. And... Uh, I, you know, I thought we, we did an okay job at knocking out the post and not letting them have those opportunities. When they get the ball in the post, they just cut guys off of it. They try to get layups. Then they kick out from there. And we did a, I thought we did an okay job of not letting the ball get in there. And then, it, you know, if you let them get deep in the clock and you let the ball get in the paint, you're gonna, they're, they're going to have to settle for more threes. Purdue wins that game 96-67, the final score. 23 points for the Boilermakers from Sasha Stefanovic. Speaking of three-point shooting, he was five of six from three in that game. Let's take a phone call. Again, the number is 1-888-246-2678. Landon from Covington is up first with the coach. Landon, welcome to the show. You're on with Coach Painter. Hey, as you get later into the season and, like, start playing better teams than you obviously did the first two games, how do you plan on adjusting players' lineups, like cutting down on minutes, playing who's hot and who's not? Like, how do you just plan on doing that? I just plan on going off their production. And so whoever plays well, I'm going to play them more. And whoever doesn't play as well, I'm going to play them less. It's, I know that's kind of profound, but um, when you have a good team, and a lot of times when you get to like seven or eight, you have a real drop off. And you're just like, ah, I don't trust, you know, eight, nine, ten. They're not quite ready or whatever it might be. I, you know, I, I think 
all of our guys could start for us. And then and I feel comfortable with that. Like, you'd be surprised, like, in a practice, we'll have one team dominate the other. Then the next day, the other team dominates them. And then the next day, it's even. So we, we, we've had some real competitive practices, and I think that's how you make improvements. But it, it is a little bit of an issue, but I'd rather have too many players than too few. And so I think it's a great problem to have. And you've always said it, Coach Painter, you don't decide at the playing time. The players decide that. Yeah, a little hokey. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, it's true, though. When you, when you get to it, it's like, you know, who's, who's really been productive, whose team wins, you know, who's going to give you the best chance. And sometimes it's just, you know, everybody's doing their job, and it's just from a schematic approach. Like, this is the group that, you know, we feel gives us the best chance to win. But things always happen. Injuries always happen. Foul trouble always happens. There's always something that comes up. So uh, we're, we're really excited about our team and the depth that we have. Take a break. More with Coach Painter when we come back to Wolfie's Grill. Coach Matt Painter's show presented, as always, by Jim Co. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Message. And beating Wisconsin for the second time this season. What does Boyer and the Badgers have to say about it? Pounded over by Boyer on the serve. There's Johnson nice. popped up by Demps. Gilly over to Ojo, rolls one over, handled by the Boilermakers. Bump set, here's Newton. Stopped by Barnes. Gilly runs it to Red Key, reaching for it. It's near the net, it's tapped over by Bush. Demps waits for it, Gilly gets it back to Dana, this time more controlled, and it's popped up off the floor on match point by Hornick. Newton with the swipe, Demps with the stop. Red Key runs, tries to push down the line. Dug out Otek, left side, Newton, popped up Boyer. Oh, off the board, Barnes saves it. Wow. And a free ball, Wisconsin, lucky to keep it alive. Newton for the match, Boyer with the stop. Brought back in play by Barnes. Here's Ozo shoving it over. Free ball, Purdue, again on match points. Left side to Newton, off of Barnes, and wow. Purdue does it again. The Boilermakers beat the Badgers for the second time this season, and Wisconsin has company atop the Big Ten standings. Now a three-way tie. He's putting in another defensive player he feels like defense is critical. Saved a sub so that he has three back row players that can really do a good job in the backcourt to defend the ball. He's putting in another defensive player. He feels like defense is critical. Saved a sub so that he has three back row players that can really do a good job in the backcourt to defend the ball. Even Colvin, gosh, I love that player. We are tied in the fourth set, not anymore. Purdue off the challenge has grabbed the 23-22 lead. Bush sealing the net perfectly. Allie Hornung again with Purdue on a 3-0 run, trying to win in four. Cook puts it down, and it is match point Purdue. Crowd staying in it, but they have to be stunned. McGraw keeps it alive. Miyabe. Basketball fans live tonight, Wolfie's Grill, Wabash Landing, West Lafayette. Rob Blackman here with Purdue head coach Matt Painter. It is the Matt Painter Radio Show. Again, a reminder, we will not be here next Monday. We'll take next Monday off, uh, Thanksgiving week, taking Monday off, and then we'll return the following Monday, which is that uh, last Monday in the month of November. So uh, you're still certainly more than welcome to show up at Wolfie's next Monday night. Just know there'll be no coaches show uh, if you are here. Hey, Madden fans, the Level Next Madden National Championship eSports Tournament is streaming now and is sponsored by Unilever, which will donate one million meals to Feeding America. Watch the best college student Madden players compete for $100,000 in cash by watching on Twitch. Just search Level Next GG. Uh, folks checking us in, uh, checking in tonight, I should say, or whether uh, maybe on Twitter Live or YouTube. Some also watching on Facebook Live, and we thank you for that. Folks checking in tonight from uh, Richardson, Texas, and Hills uh, Hillsdale, Michigan, and also Nashville, Tennessee. So thank you, folks, for checking us out tonight. For those listening on the Varsity Network app, we thank you for that as well. Uh, Coach, you mentioned how injuries can sometime affect the, sometimes affect the flow of a season. We do, unfortunately, have an injury to talk about with our ball club, uh, freshman Brian Waddell. Uh, looks like a major knee injury, and that's going to have him. Uh, he was going to redshirt anyway, but still, the fact is uh, ACL injury for him has him on the shelf for a while, unfortunately. Yeah, very unfortunate. You know, had uh, got the injury just in an individual workout and, uh, you know, feel feel terrible for him. Like, just he's he's gained weight. He's really played well in practice. He's, he's if anybody that's attended our practices, He's done some really good things and can, can really defend, and he's long, knows how to play. He's a good play runner, comes from a great high school program. 
Um, but he was really making some huge strides, and everything was just kind of falling into place for him. And it's always that first year, like, you're getting acclimated to things, and now you can really make a jump and make an improvement because you just have this time. Mm-hmm. And you're amazed by your time, especially when we start traveling and doing stuff, and now that gets taken from him because of this injury. But, you know, on the bright side, like, you know, it's – it, it, it's bad for him, but he's got the full year, and just now he's just got to be able to go through this process of waiting a week or so before he has surgery, and then just rehabbing it. And you know, through the years, you you find out with guys is that, you know, you got to get healthy, then you got to improve, and you got to get healthy and get 100%, and then start making that step and start making that climb. Very competitive people when they get in that position, they get antsy, yeah. and they really start pushing their rehab a little bit too much and stuff. And you just got to go with the process and. Listen to your doctors and, and, and just kind of take your time and get healthy. And, you know, he's got a year to, to, to get back to, you know, for the start. And I know it's, he's going to want to practice and obviously before that and, and get going. But um, just feel bad for him. But, you know, just looking forward to coaching him starting next year. Well, speaking of freshmen, we did have some breaking news just before the Bellarmine game last Tuesday and the fact that uh, Trey Kaufman Wren has decided he's going to take a red shirt this year and not play. Do you mind talking about that decision? Yep. Well, that was, you know, pretty close. You know, it's, I, I said in the paper it was a 50-50 thing, and, you know, we just supported him. Either decision that he would have made, we just laid out the pros and the cons for him. And, you know, the, the variable that was moving was the fact that, you know, after we played four non-conference games, you know, Mason Gillis is coming back. Right. And, and, and so, like, you know, we, we have a lot of depth. We have a lot of people on the front court. And the one thing when you, you go through that process, the only thing that you can talk about is what's happening right then. And a lot of times that's what recruiting gets to. Recruiting gets to projection. So you're saying, here's how I think things will go, but people still have to earn it. People still have to do it. And some guys get in and they really like take off right away. And then some guys don't. And then it's a little bit different. This is a different scenario. This guy's come in, he's watched film, he's worked on his game, he's put in a lot of time. He did have a setback to start the summer, you know, when he was out for a month. With the injury he got in the Indiana Kentucky All Star game, so that was different. But this guy's, you know, he's he's locked in. I mean, he's a very studious guy when it comes to wanting to improve, wanting to get better. So he's spending a lot of time on his individual game. He's spending a lot of time in the weight room, spending a lot of time doing extra film. So he's doing everything in his power to help himself. And then this is where he's at, and that's a hard thing. But I think coaches across the country have a tough time with that conversation. It's a hard conversation to have, but it's the right conversation to have, to be honest, because now you go four games, Mason comes back, and he plays really well. You know, he's in that rotation then, you yeah. know. But what if he doesn't? And now all of a sudden, like, he's not playing 10 to 15 minutes a game. He's not starting. He's not being a backup at 20 minutes. He's not in the rotation, and he's not playing. That young guy's just going to look at you like, hey, man, you've been doing this for 30 years. Like, Why didn't you say this possibly could happen? So that's what I try to do. I try to just lay out the best scenario and the worst scenario and then just say make sure that you can live with both of those. And if you can live with both of those, then that's your decision. You make your decision. And But here's where you're at, and here's the things that you need to do to, to help yourself get there. But now we don't have June, July, August, September. Now, yeah. And the season's right there on you, so it's really sticky. And He's one of the most mature 19-year-olds, 18-year-olds, whatever he is. Um, I'm not sure if he's 18 or 19, but uh, that I've been around. He's very, very intelligent. And, you know, you, you get in those situations. And when you're young, you always do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You don't do what you think is best for you. Right. You just go on an urge when you're young. Like, right. no, I don't want to do that. And <laughs> you just, go. that's the way we're all, that's why you have parents. That's why you have coaches. That's why you have older people around you to say, all right, pump the brakes here. Let me just uh, talk real quick about, you know, all the things that could go into this and, and stuff like that. So he really appreciated that. He talked to some guys on our team. He talked to some staff members. Like I said, it could have went either way, and we would have supported him, but we just wanted to be frank and be honest. And um, just looking forward to just excited about with the three guys that we got signed coming in, the two guys that we have redshirted. Our staff is still doing a, a great job recruiting, and uh, I, I feel very, very good about our future. More with Coach Painter in just a moment. Again, you can join the show at 1-888-246-2678. Uh, we'll talk uh, a little more Indiana State and look ahead to Wright State when we come back on the other side of this break. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Ball played through. Steffens. Patrick able to disrupt. Ball is 
kicked off of Patrick and recovered by Bova. Away by the defense. In Chicago, they play defense per the Ramblers. And that ball is dangerous. Opportunity and just outside. They find Griffith. Griffith 1v1. Uses the scissor move. Gets free. Left foot. Fires it off. And it's in! The Boilermakers are going to the second round of the NCAA Women's College Cup off of the left foot of Sarah Griffith. A brilliant curving shot. The game of basketball has always meant more here, and it's always meant everything to me. It's been my passion, my obsession, my first love, and the thing I've always been best Katie at. Gerald's averaging five and a half assists a game. And Gerald gets the offensive board, puts it right back up and in. I learned something along I mean, the individual way. Individual honors really mean nothing to me. If you surround yourself with greatness, you can become great yourself. We know yourself. can take the state championship away from us, and it's just awesome. A state title, Indiana Miss Basketball, Big Ten champion, the Elite Eight, the WNBA, national championship, all these dreams realized. Basketball has taken me around the world, and now it's brought me back home. Back to the greatest school in the greatest state in the country, the Boilermaker State. Now it's time for the next chapter, for new dreams and a return to greatness. The head coach for your Boilermakers, Katie Gerald! Let's ride, y'all. Welcome back to the Matt Painter Radio Show, everyone. For those watching on Facebook Live tonight and checking in from places like Seattle, Palm Harbor, Florida, and Orlando, Florida, thank you, folks. Uh, I had a lot of Florida folks checking in tonight, and thanks for that. If you want to visit with Coach Painter, 1-888-246-2678. That's how you can visit with a coach. Uh, Purdue beating Indiana State this past Friday night for win number two of the season. 92-67 to was the final score in that one. A lot of impressive things on the stat sheet in that one, Coach, when I look back at it. Maybe none more impressive just for me personally. You had five guys with three or more assists. Really shared the ball well, I thought, Friday night. Yeah, I thought we did a great job offensively of, uh, of moving the basketball. And obviously, you know, we didn't shoot it quite as well. Um, but, I, but I thought, you know, once we figured out, like, what we needed to do in terms of, especially because they couldn't handle us on the interior, you know, Travion is still just, you know, Pass the ball so well in those mm -hmm. games. He really puts people in a bind in, in what they want to do. And Zach, Zach can just establish such low position. So Zach's getting the ball five, six feet from the rim. And then just, you know, the one thing about when you get such deep position is when they do come and double, they got to come from such a distance to double them. And now what they have to recover and get in that rotation. And if you move the ball quickly, they're going to get behind it. You can get simple drives and wide open shots. And, and so it's a little bit different when Zach's in versus Travion, because Travion doesn't get his deep position, but Travion passes the ball so well yeah. that I think it's really hard for them, um, talking about the opponents, to be able to, like, prepare for us. Because like, yeah. how can you grab somebody 7'4", 300 pounds off the street <laughs> right. and to prepare for it? I always say that with high school coaches that come to our practice, and we'll run something, and someone will go, that's some really good, good stuff right there. I said, yeah, you guys should do that for your 7'4", 300-pound guy you got in high school. <laughs> right. And, like, it just – he just makes it look so easy. Yeah. Um, so I just think that dynamic of our team um, – yeah, I know you, a lot of people have seen the stats, those guys together, because they, they haven't played together, but that 40 minutes is pretty impressive. They're the best center in basketball, um, you know, together. And so we just got to keep working um, at other things and just making simple plays, moving the basketball. I think we had six turnovers the first game. We had 12 – Indiana State, um, probably a little bit too many, some unforced errors there. Learning when to attack when you have numbers and angles, and then learning to put people on defense and move the ball. See, what, what sometimes the difference is when people can score against you, they're going to set their defense. When people can't score against you, obviously you're going to have more transition opportunities. And then really good teams, especially in the Big Ten, you're going to face a set defense a lot. So you got to learn how to play in the half court. So we kind of force that upon us. We run a lot of things because now while you're doing that, you can play the other way 
and still score some points, but you're not going to play that way in the Big Ten and score a bunch of points. Yeah. Maybe against a couple people, but not everybody, especially the elite teams. When you get up against Michigan's defense or Michigan State's defense or Ohio State or Wisconsin, you know, the real pillars in our league, you know, you, you have to be able to execute and run good stuff. And so we just got to keep working at what we're doing offensively and uh, just taking what the defense gives us. But we also have an element, um, I think, where we're different that really puts people into binds with our size. Zach Eady in that Indiana State game, 22 points, 10 rebounds, three assists, three block shots. But back to Travion Williams for a moment. To me, he has been a huge factor in the offense in the first two games, has really affected the game on the offensive end, despite the fact he's only attempted seven shots through the first two games. Right. But he still, to me, has been a very influential offensively. Am I seeing it correctly? Yeah, you know, they're going down there and, and messing with him on that double, and he's just hitting guys wide open for mm. shots. I mean, it's like, you know, it, it's it's kind of target practice for him as he flicks <laughs> it. There. Now, he gets he gets carried away sometimes, and he'll flip a couple out of bounds. And, you know, just when it's simple, be simple. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, when it's right there for you, be simple. You don't, as Coach Katie would say, you don't have to add any fruit juice. You know, just make the simple play, mm -hmm. move the basketball. And uh, when he does that, man, it's, it's, it's really hard to deal with him. Then he starts pump faking, and then he just backs you down and goes over his left shoulder, and then it's kind of the best of both worlds. Jaden Ivey had a huge night, 27 points, eight rebounds, four assists, two steals. Let's go to the phones, 1-888-246-2678. Hank. From Hagerstown is checking in. Hank, welcome to the show, and you're on with Coach Painter. Oh, it's a great, uh, great pleasure. Uh, uh, you know, Coach, a uh, big fan, and of course, big fan of Bob calling the games there. Uh, just listen to everything I can, and I'm a Purdue guy all the way. Over here in Hagerstown, which uh, Coach, as you know, is over here close to Ohio, and I, uh, I'm familiar with the Wright State program, and they do a, they do a heck of a job. And I just wanted to find out how you keep the team focused uh, so they don't look ahead to those big games this weekend. I'd be interested to know that. And, of course, my friends call me Hammer and Hank. So I'll uh, end this call with a hammer down. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Hank. Appreciate it, Hank. Uh, we, we, we can feel your passion here over at Wolfie's. Um, you know, I think that's a great question. You know, the, you, you have games. Um, you know, for us, like, the one thing that I talked about getting into the NCAA tournament last year and playing North Texas, and I talked about knowing their head coach and how good their head coach was, but just coaching at that level at Eastern Illinois and Southern Illinois, how talented of players we had at Eastern and Southern Illinois and how hungry they were. Because those guys wanted to play at Illinois. They wanted to play at Missouri. They wanted to play at Indiana, at Purdue, and they didn't. They, they were mid-major players, and, you know, they have a chip on their shoulder. And collectively, anybody in this game can get beat. It, it just can. And so, like, we've seen some things where a 16s beat a one. Then the, then the one the next year turns around and wins the national championship. And, and so, like, you know, you have to learn some hard lessons. And, but you, you can't fear anybody, but you got to respect everybody. I think that's the best way to go about it. And we'll have a lot of respect for them. Um, the coach there, his dad was a guy that – was assistant in Illinois forever with Lou Henson. I went to camp there and I was six years old all the way to I was 17. And he was actually in camp when I was a younger kid. He's a little bit older than I am. So he was a great coach um, at one of the Dakotas. It's slipping my mind which one. But we faced them um, in one of our exempt tournaments and, and beat them at like seven or eight when we had a really good team with Juwan Johnson and Etuan Moore and Robbie Hummel. And, you know, and so they're going to be ready. They're 18 and 6 last year. They got everybody returned except their big man who was the best player. I think he was the best player in their league. Yep. Love. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and so this is going to be a tough one for us. It, and, and, and so, like, you know, we have to be ready to play and be hooked up. But if you have the experience that we did against North Texas, who, in my opinion, was a quality team and they outplayed us and outcoached us, um, if you can't learn that and you, and you have an experienced team, then, then, then something's missing there. And so, like, our, our, our guys will definitely respect them and, and we'll be ready to play. But it's a really good question because a lot of, you know, young players, they, they will look past some things like that and try to look towards that next game. And then that's how you get upset. And that's how you get beat. So we got to do a good job as a staff of having our guys ready. So I, I appreciate the, the phone call, Hank. We will uh, talk more about Wright State in just a moment. We are live tonight at Wolfie's Grill for the Coach Matt Painter Radio Show. Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. More with the coach in a moment. Coach Painter Show brought to you by Jimco. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield.
Inside look, good give and go, but Edie right there to swat it away. Great help defense, Calix Stevens. Oh, going to move good inside, move. Dave Nivey. Mm. Chance to go to the line and tie the game. Victory on the road for Indiana State. Three-point lead for the Sycamores. Stefanovic fires away from three, ties again. Best shooter to come. From the outside, too strong. They had to hoist it up there to get it over Edie's hands. Ivy on the drive, yes, with the left hand. Bledson from three now. Indiana State's playing harder right now. Blocked by there Williams. Ivy to the rack, lays it up and in. You sub Brandon Newman and Eric Hunter, and you sub in two starters. Eric Hunter's the best defender in the conference. Brandon Newman's one of the best scorers. Good pickup. Edie inside, good look to first. Great pass. pass. Oh. Edie, too good easy fella. for the Boilers. Point of emphasis getting into the paint here tonight. Goes back door cut. Swatted away by Williams. Took just two shots. Ivy, straightaway three. He comes out, guns a blaze here in the second half. But at the end of the day, your guards got to make plays come March. And Purdue right now, I mean, that guard right there, one of the best guards in the country. I'd be excited if I was Coach Painter having him on my team. Shot clock winding down, down to five. Ivy, hit the pocket. Showtime. Break away. Retaining the dribble, no look pass. Travion Williams inside. Jade Ivy, too much. Jade Ivy tonight. Coach Wooden. Ten national titles in 12 years for UCLA. Isaiah Thompson dials up a three. Tough team to contend with in the Missouri Valley Conference. Nice pass by Williams underneath Fur. Back everyone to Wolfie's Grill. Boilermaker basketball tonight with a Matt Painter radio show. Time now for our Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Boilermaker student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our pro boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Uh, tonight we talk about former Boilermaker basketballer Vince Edwards. Vince, uh, second round pick of the Houston Rockets in the uh, 2018 NBA draft. Vince still hooping, about, uh, hooping it up. He's in the NBA G League right now playing for the uh, Iowa Wolves. And Vince and his Wolves team off to a great start. They've just started their season at the G League level. They are 2-0 and on this young season. And uh, Vince and the rest of the Wolves will have a chance to go 3-0 and tonight because they have an 8 o'clock tip-off against Grand Rapids. So Vince Edwards playing pro basketball right now in the NBA G League in uh, Des Moines, Iowa for the Iowa Wolves. Uh, Coach, back to uh, the topic at hand, which was Wright State. You mentioned they have 10 players coming back of a team from a team last year that won 18 games. Their best player, Love, is gone, but he's the only one. Um, they are 1-1 one one on the season. They uh, lost Friday night in a shootout uh, at Marshall. Uh, I think the score was uh, 90, maybe 92 to 88, something in there, something uh, close to that, 96 to 88. I was close. Uh, but two guys that I noticed really jumped off the stat page, Grant Basile, who was second team all league last year. He had 35, 37 points, five rebounds in that game Friday night. <laughs> That's a lot of points in a yeah. ball game. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, that mismatch five. He can shoot it. He can drive it. He can play in the post. So um, he's a very good player, and that's what exactly the game was. It, it was a shootout. And there wasn't a lot of defense played. Mm. And uh, it was a fun game to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the coaches liked it at, um, in terms of how many points the other teams were scoring. But, no, they, um, they have a good team. They, you know, they, they have a good lead guard. They got a good wing, a guy that can shoot. They have a kid named Finky that's from Champaign, yep. Illinois. His older brother played at Illinois, if the right. fans remember him. But he's an athletic guy that can shoot the basketball and drive it and post. He can do a little bit of everything as a big guard. And, uh, but, like, you know, Love was that guy. And then Basili played off of him at the four or five. And now he, they've just kind of played him as that small ball five, and it really causes problems for people. It'll, it'll be interesting for us because, um, you know, he's a guy that can really get Zach and get Travion out there and then use his dribble and use his quickness to try to get by him. But, um, you know, it, it's going to be a big challenge for us. I think he was all defensive team in the Horizon League last year. The other guy I wanted to hit on is a guy who was first team all conference last year, Tanner Holden. 15 and 7 last year. He had 25 against Marshall. He had 19 in their opener. 6'6 junior from Wheelersburg, Ohio. Another guy that can give you some real problems. 
Yeah, you know, you would think you get like over 60 points from two people. That that, that ought to that ought <laughs> yeah. do the other Win team the in. Yeah. yeah, but no, he he's a he's a good player. You know, he's, he he can make a lot of intermediate shots. He hits floaters and he hits runners and just a good in between guy. Like you know, who who are you gonna put on him? You gonna put like a real guard on him? You know, are you gonna put um, somebody bigger, like a bigger wing, like a combo forward? He normally can get by those guys, and uh, you know. Those both of those guys are, are, are tough matchups, and then you throw Finky in there, you know, you know, at their like their three kind of it's their two, three, four, five. It just depends on their their lineup. So they'll play a couple different ways when they go a little bigger, they go a little smaller. Uh, let's go to the phone lines again. The number is one eight 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 two four six two six seven eight. Regan is uh, calling us from Florida tonight. Regan, welcome to the show. You're on with Coach. Wow, boiler up. Thank you for having me. Um, uh, before I ask my question, I just wanted to shout out uh, the Boiler Brass team that y'all are playing the game. Um, I love what Matt Conway does for you guys. Um, my question is more about Mason Gillis. I know um, he's sitting out for the next four games. Mm-hmm. Um, the team is so dynamic now, you know, that's really, they're really clicking on the court. But I love what he brought to the offense. He was just such an aggressive player. Um, do you think his absence is going to affect a few games to come when he comes back and just creates a new... Um, feeling new energy for y'all, or is that something that's going to be solved in practice kind of thing? Yeah, he'll be out two more games. So he'll be out this game, then he'll be out the North Carolina game, and then he'll be able to play whether we play Tennessee or Villanova. So that'll be his first game, the Tennessee slash Villanova game, depending on how we do against um, North Carolina. I think it'll be fine. That was kind of part of what we we talked about earlier in the show about where we were with numbers. you know, with everything in, in, in terms of guys getting minutes. And um, there was uh, Ronald Nord's uh, assistant with the Pacers, and I always talk to our guys about this, and I haven't, I haven't said it this year, but Ronald Nord played at Butler, and uh, he started on their first Final Four team. And then in their second Final Four team, he didn't start. And I'll never forget him getting interviewed because it was such great perspective from a young person. And they just said, how do you feel being in this Final Four when you started last year and now you're not starting – this year and he says well I didn't come to Butler to start I came to Butler to win and I always thought if you could just keep your perspective right there as a player especially because there's not a player in the room that doesn't want to play more so when somebody gets mad that they're not playing I'm kind of happy they're mad some guy's just going to accept it but don't get mad with your voice like get mad with your actions like bring value to your team bring value to everybody around you and and the people that do play in front of you like pull for them and, like, cheer for them and, and be there because they are your teammate and, and, and do those things. Well, Mason's that way. So anytime last year Aaron Wheeler played in front of him, Mason always cheered. Mason was always trying to help him. And then it got flipped, and Mason played more than him. Aaron always cheered for him. So it always worked. Travion was that way with Zach, and Zach was that way with Travion. You know, Aaron gets – I mean, uh, Eric Hunter gets that way with um, – Isaiah, I'm getting tired here, with, <laughs> <laughs> with Isaiah. And they, they, they support each other, and so they're good guys. But do they want to play more? Sure they want to play. Do they all want to start? Well, sure they want to start, but that's not the way it is. Some people have three or four starters out there. You know, I got 10 or 11 guys that could start. And so it's one of those things where now you're going to add this piece to it. You know, Mason's a guy that plays off of people. He takes his shots. He hustles. He plays hard. Um, you know, he's a really, really good piece for us, and I, and I think he'll blend in. The one thing that does jump out with people that are out, whether it's for injury, um, and you just miss games. When you haven't got your reps and you haven't been in games, you watch, and you're just like, man, I can't wait to get out there. I, w- I would have done this right. I would have done this right. And the thing that you haven't had is you haven't had real live game reps for a while, and it just takes a little bit of time. Sometimes guys come back and they play great in that first game, then they have a letdown. Or they come back that first game and they don't play well, then they realize, hey, man, i got to concentrate better. So it's going to be really important for him just to take what things give and kind of ease into it. But Mason's a hard charger, man. He, he plays hard. He competes. He lays it on the line. I know it's really bothered him because he's made a mistake here and, you know, he's had to own it and uh, he, he's done so. But it, it's been really hard for him not being able to play, but also not being in practice. Like, you got to give the guys that are going to be in games the reps. they got to play. They're the ones that are going to be in the games. Now here after a couple games, now he'll start to get, you know, as, as many reps as everybody else and then get back into the flow of things. Jim Co. Constructors is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Matt Painter Show. And 
Proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Jimco Constructors says Boiler Up. More with Coach Painter, brought to you by Jimco. When we come back, this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Mackey Arena, season opener in front of what will be a sold out crowd. 25 sellouts in a row for the Boilermakers. There's just a whole different vibe and energy in the building tonight. You can tell everyone realizes this game counts for the record books. This is a highly anticipated season for the Purdue Boilermakers. Lofty expectations, and everybody in the building is ready to get it going. expectation level to play in front of 15,000 people. I really wasn't sure, honestly. I've never even played, I don't even think I've played in front of a thousand people before, so I mean, just, I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea how I'd react, but I liked it a lot, honestly. It feels great. I mean, the, the fans here are welcoming. They make it feel like home, helping you. They're yelling at you, supporting you. We're not doing as well. They're yelling encouragement and stuff like that. So it's really just, um, it's great to be in. Um, you know, if you're, if you're worried about playing time, and you're worried about starting, and you're worried about the wrong thing. You know, I mean, uh, if Purdue wins, uh, I think that's all that matters. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm trying my best to, you know, continue to trust Coach Painter and, you know, hit the rotations, because in reality, you know, he wants to play everybody, but, you know, everybody can't play. You know, as a leader, as a senior, uh, somebody who's been through it, um, you, ha you have to learn how to accept roles. Um, you know, obviously, Coach will switch it up uh, throughout the year, but, um, it's definitely a maturity thing for me, and um, you know, all you all you can do is just be happy for your teammate. Show brought to you by Jimco. We are live tonight from Wolfie's Grill, Wabash Landing in West Lafayette. You know, one of these days, I'm actually going to do my homework before I host this show and know what I'm talking about. I mentioned Vince Edwards a couple segments ago, being our pro boiler. Not even thinking about this, and Coach Painter brought this to my attention. Vince's dad, Bill is actually the all-time leading scorer at the history of Wright State basketball, who will be here tomorrow. Not Bill, but Wright State. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe Bill will be here. I don't know. But So thank you for that, Coach. No, he was a great – Bill Edwards was a great player. And uh, I think the, the center last year, if I got this right, correct, I should say, not to you know, be a play on words with Wright State, <laughs> but um, I think he knocked him out as the all-time leading rebounder because I think Bill was the all-time leading scorer and rebounder. But don't gotcha. don't hold me to that one. But interesting story. I worked for a guy named Rick Samuels at Eastern Illinois, and he was the head coach at Eastern Illinois the same 25 years that Gene Cady was the head coach at Purdue. Mm -hmm. And I worked for him for three years. I took Dave Weber's job, Bruce Weber's brother, who then went to Glenbrook North and coached John Shire there. And I asked him one day, I said, who's the greatest player that you've ever – ever coached against like that was in a conference that you had to play all the time so in my mind I'm thinking Tony Bennett because Tony Bennett was in at Green Bay at Eastern Illinois and he says you know what it's probably Bill Edwards he said he was just so tough and he could rebound and he could score he could take you outside he could play you inside he goes he just was a he was a tough matchup for us and I at the time I didn't even know who Bill Edwards was and I had to go look it up and I was 25 26 years old at the time so it was a couple years ago but I, I, I always I told him that story and I think it was kind of a cool story because here's a guy that, you know, you're at a mid-major and, like, you get lost. And then Bill played a couple, I think, a couple years in the NBA. Then he had a great career overseas. He was a high-level, elite, you know, international player. And, by the way, you're correct. I just looked it up. Love did pass him last year for all-time career-leading rebounder. So Bill Edwards moves to number two on that list. Anyway, interesting nugget there. But that's not the nugget that I was promising you folks over here setting up against the wall on the far side of the – of the restaurant. More with Coach Painter in a moment. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. And beating Wisconsin for the second time this season. What does Boyer and the Badgers have to say about it? Pounded over by Boyer on the serve. There's Johnson nice. popped up by Demps. Hilly over to Ojo. Rolls one over. Handled by the Boilermakers. Bump set. Here's Newton. Stopped by Barnes. Hilly 
Runs it to Redke, reaching for it. It's near the net. It's tapped over by Bush. Demps waits for it. Healy gets it back to Dana. This time more controlled. And it's popped up off the floor on match point by Hornick. Newton with the swipe. Demps with the stop. Redke runs. Tries to push down the line. Dug out Otek. Left side. Newton. Popped up. Boyer. Oh, off the board. Barnes saves it. Wow. And a free ball. Wisconsin lucky to keep it alive. Newton for the match. Boyer with the stop. Brought back in play by Barnes. Here's Ozo shoving it over. Free ball, Purdue again on match points. Left side to Newton off of Barnes, and wow. Purdue does it again. The Boilermakers beat the Badgers for the second time this season, and Wisconsin has company atop the Big Ten standings. Now a three-way tie. He's putting in another defensive player. He feels like defense is critical. Saved a sub so that he has three back row players that can really do a good job in the backcourt to defend the ball. He's putting in another defensive player. He feels like defense is critical. Saved a sub so that he has three back row players that can really do a good job in the backcourt to defend the ball. Even Colvin, gosh, I love that player. We are tied in the fourth set, not anymore. Purdue off the challenge has grabbed the 23-22 lead. Bush sealing the net perfectly. Allie Hornung again with Purdue on a 3-0 run, trying to win in four. Cook puts it down and is match point Purdue. Crowd staying in it, but they have to be stunned. McGraw keeps it alive. Welcome back to the Matt Painter Show tonight, live from Wolfie's Grill right here in Wabash Landing. Coach Painter Show brought to you by Jimco. Uh, let's go back to the phone. It's time for one more call here tonight. Connor and Carmel, welcome. You're on with Coach. Hey, hey Coach. Um, hey, looking ahead to this weekend, kind of from a coach's perspective, you know, with such a quick turnaround between games, you know, in the Big Ten tournament, you've at least scouted all those teams before. NCAA tournament, you have at least 48 hours between games. How do you approach uh, this weekend, just in how you doubt how you prepare, and especially looking at that second game where you really don't know how you play or who you play, um, how do you approach that as a coach? Right. Well, you just prepare for the first game, and, you know, you're going to be able to scout and watch them live the day before they play. So the assistants go and watch that game. I think they actually were, were the second game on, in, in, in that first day. So they, they go and watch them live. And so I think that's a really good gauge at that time, you would rather play the first game. Um, it gives you more rest. And you also get to kind of figure out as you go along, like you're not going to know the first game. You just scout both teams and you go play your game. Then win or lose, now you know. Well, when it gets flipped, now you can go into the next game and you can kind of see as the game progresses, like you get in the second half, if it's just not a tight game, you can move toward. That's kind of here nor there. But you just kind of keep your focus on, on, on the game that you're playing and, and not get too far ahead of you. Now, you do legwork. Like, you, you do do, like, your, you know, you have your graduate assistants. Um, you know, you have guys that are working on things before, but they also don't get too far ahead of themselves because half of that work is just going to get thrown in the, in the dumpster um, because you're only going to play one of those teams. So you just, just keep things in perspective. Know that you're going to watch them live the day before. They're not going to do a whole lot of different then, you know, it's like Villanova. Villanova is like Michigan, stat, Michigan State. It's an easy scout. It's just hard to beat them. <laughs> you know, it's like you know what's coming, but, you know, can you beat them? Like that's, you know, whereas when you face some other teams, like we faced Tennessee before in an exempt tournament. We faced them in the NCAA tournament. We, we won a close one. We lost a close one. You know, it's tough, hard-nosed Rick Barnes. You know, you can talk about Jay Wright, tough, hard-nosed. When you deal with really good coaches and programs, they have a lot of the same similar characteristics. It's going to be really hard um, to beat them. They're all really talented. But that's, that's kind of the format of how we handle it. Uh, by the way, on Facebook Live, we have found out Coach Katie is watching tonight. Coach Gene Katie, thanks for joining us, Coach. Uh, our final segment of the Coach Painter Show coming up next. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Inside look, good give and go, but Edie right there to swat it away. Great help defense, Calix Stevens. Oh, and the move inside, Dave Nivey. Mm. Chance to go to the line and tie the game. Victory on the road for Indiana State. Three-point lead for the Sycamores. Stefanovic fires away from three, ties the game. Best shooter in the cover. From the outside, too strong. They had to hoist it up there to get it over Edie's hands. 
Ivy go. on the drive. Yes, with the left hand. Bledson from three now. Indiana State's playing harder right now. Blocked by there Williams. Ivy to the rack, lays it up and in. You sub Brandon Newman and Eric Hunter, and you sub in two starters. Eric Hunter's the best defender in the conference. Brandon Newman's one of the best scorers. Good pick up. Edie inside. Good, Good look to first. Great pass. Pass. Oh. Edie. Too Good easy fella. for the Boilers. Point of emphasis getting into the paint here tonight. Good backdoor cut. Swatted away by Williams. Took just two shots. Ivy straight away three. He comes out, guns a blaze here in the second half. But at the end of the day, your guards got to make plays come March. And Purdue right now, I mean, that guard right there, one of the best guards in the country. I'd be excited if I was Coach Painter having a moment. Shot clock winding down, down to five. Ivy pick the pocket. Showtime. Break away. Retaining the dribble, no look pass. Travion Williams inside. Jaden Ivy, too much. Jaden Ivy tonight. Coach Wooden, ten national titles in twelve years for UCLA. Isaiah Thompson dials up a three. Tough team to contend with in the Missouri Valley Conference. That's Final segment here of the Matt Painter Radio Show. Hey, no one gets you closer to Big Ten sports than Sirius XM. Tune in to shows on Big Ten Radio, hosted by experts like Ben Hartsock, A.J. Hawk, and John Jansen. You can get a free trial to take your team with you on your phone, online, and at home. Start listening at SiriusXM.com slash Big Ten SXM. All right, quick nugget here for you since some folks in the back of the room wanted to hear one. Uh, before I came to Purdue, I used to be the radio voice for Tennessee State University. Tennessee State University, and we were playing uh, at Wright State. We uh, bust in from Nashville up to Wright State. We were arrived at our team hotel there in Dayton, and we got there. There was this huge spread of fresh-baked chocolate chip cookies with a large sign that said, Welcome TSU Basketball. I walked up to the table with our head coach, Frankie Allen. I looked at Coach, and I said, Coach, man, isn't this awesome? They bake these fresh book, uh, baked chocolate chip cookies just for us. And he looks right at me, deadpans it, and says, Rob, you always fatten the calf before you slaughter it. He then turned and walked away. And wouldn't you know it,